And uh, um, today's session is James presenting, so I'll, I'll pass it on to James. And uh, looking forward to have your involvement in the presentation. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, hopefully the recording is working. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay, so now we've got our third season. Uh, hopefully we can be as long as, I don't know, Breaking Bad or something, or longer. <laughs> <With Yeah. that. laughs> um, just to recap what we're doing for the next four weeks, and then we'll have another series after that. But uh, for the moment, we're going to go through 3D style, so I'll go through this today. Marcelo is going to talk next week about Archicad and Twin Motion. Um, actually, the 2020.2 update just came out yesterday and the uh, plugins for Archicad 24. So they came out yesterday. Uh, the week after that, I will show customization of the Archicad work environments. So not always having to use the out of the box default Archicad uh, sort of layout and setup. And the week after that, uh, we're gonna have uh, guests from Ezra. So Marcelo, maybe you can say a word or of what's planned. Um, yeah, so so um, Kihua is uh, one very good power user of Archicad. Uh, they've been using Archicad for many years in Singapore and they also have an office in, in China. And um, they have agreed to give us you know, another update and a message. I like really like the title that they've chosen. So pretty much showing what are what they're up to lately with using Archicad and using our 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 ecosystem and the solutions for their for their workflow. So probably they will share some of the um, projects they've been working on. It's always very interesting to see Kiwa's presentations because their designs are, are um, I would say, normally exquisite and and fun. So yeah. Look, Looking forward to that. Just that meanwhile, you have to put up with me and James for a couple of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, yeah. So as a reminder, uh, the end of the second season, we had Goy Architects talking. So we have their video up, like all of these videos are up on our YouTube channel. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about 3D styles. So not just 3D styles, but mm -hmm. Like uh, visualization, kind of in the 3D window with our OpenGL. Uh, so let me just switch here into Archicad. Okay. So I've downloaded the. Actually, this is um, a free uh, file that you can get off the uh, our Archicad uh, help center. So this is a free uh, model that you can download to play around with. So I just wanted to use this one as, uh, as an example for today. And 3D styles, uh, one of the easiest ways to kind of get to this 3D style, so how this 3D uh, window looks like. Uh, down here in the bottom right in the quick options bar, uh, we see this, currently mine says no shading. So this opens and changes our 3D styles. Sometimes it uh, gets clipped off. So if you have a smaller, smaller screen, then this might get clipped off uh, a little bit. But uh, if you just resize the uh, navigator, then you can see this. But rather than this, I tend or, to find- Or you off the navigator, or hide the navigator. Yeah, or hide the navigator, or undock it, or something. I usually find the easier way to access these 3D styles is right-clicking in anywhere in the 3D window, but not on something, so in empty space. And at the top here, I have 3D styles. So we'll go through this uh, settings dialog, go through some of the settings and kind of how to change the look of this, uh, of this model. Uh, out of the box, these first items here, so the ones that have vectorial next to the end, so the ones above the first, above this divider, these are using what we call our internal engine and the ones below that line are using our, uh, the OpenGL engine. So what that means is the vectorial engine is what generates like sections and elevations and 3D documents and things like this. So everything is drawn as a, as a vector, but the OpenGL ones are all done sort of pixel based. So these are much, much quicker to generate. 
And there's a few differences between these two engines on what they can and can't show. So generally, I'd always recommend to use OpenGL because it's much, much faster, but I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, so I can see already I've got a, a few settings, like I don't see the contours and my background is just a single color. So actually there's a, yeah. So all the line work is off. So let's try to look at some ways that we can modify this. So if I go into my 3D styles, 3D styles, into this dialog. Okay, so I see my two groups. And if I select any of the ones in the second group, I can see that the 3D engine is OpenGL. And my other engine is Vectorial Engine. So if I select one in the top group, then these are all using the Vectorial Engine. And you'll notice that there's going to be a few differences between the two. So let's deal with the OpenGL first, because this is what we'll mostly use uh, day to day but I'll show you some use cases for the Vectorial Engine uh, a bit later. So for the OpenGL, uh, we can turn on and off the transparency. So currently I can see through the windows. So I can turn off the transparency. If I edit any of these settings, it's going to update the selected uh, style immediately. So if we want to create a new one, so that's what we might do. So I'm going to create a new one that we can kind of play with. So I'm going to go to new style, which is going to copy uh, the current one I have selected. And I'm going to just call this iCAD now. Okay. So if I turn off the transparency and click OK, then now I obviously don't see through the, those windows. So this can help uh, to, I think, a little bit on performance. Uh, or if there's a lot of detail behind those windows that you just want to uh, omit for this view. No, you may not want to see furniture and stuff inside. Okay, so this is the transparency. Uh, we can change between uh, wireframe and solid, uh, solid shaded. If I just go into the vectorial engines, I can also do a wireframe uh, version or a hidden line. So I'm going to stick with the OpenGL for now. So if I change this to wireframe, then my entire model turns to wireframe, which I think can be an interesting kind of like a uh, X-ray kind of view. But I'll show a little bit later on how we can kind of fine tune this using uh, layers. Okay, so let's go back into 3D styles. And I'm going to turn back into solid. Uh, monochrome model, this is quite handy. We can also do this with graphic overrides. So we can say any, everything in the model turns to white, for example, in 3D. So graphic overrides are better based on a criteria set. So anything that meets a certain criteria changes to this color. But if you just want the entire model just to turn white, I find that using the monochrome model here is, is a better option to get everything, or an easier, quicker option to get everything to one color. Okay, so now it's all white, but because my background is white and there's no contours, we can't see much. But I'll make a, another set uh, shortly. Okay, so I'll turn off the monochrome model. Uh, we have sky color, so uh, background, so basically anything above the horizon is one color and everything below the horizon is another color. So if I change the ground color, for example, just to a gray. And all of these are stored inside that style. So now I have the horizon line um, in the background. Uh, it's white for the base here because this is a um, mesh. So this is why it's white. Okay. Uh, if we choose the as in photo rendering, uh, if the photo rendering is using an image, then if we click this, then the background can be an image. Uh, but we won't use that uh, for now. Okay, so contours, I can turn on contours. I would always recommend best. Uh, draft is a little bit quicker to generate, but it's uh, you'll see more lines usually. So best will will clean up lines in 3D. Uh, I'm not really sure why we keep draft anymore, but it can be a little bit faster to generate. 
So I would always use best. And I can also change the thickness and you can see in the preview here, but this thickness is only what I see on the screen. So this is only kind of a visualization. Basically it's a pixel size of these uh, contours. So if I say six, it's gonna look kind of ugly, I think. Uh, let me turn on the monochrome model. Okay, so you can see all of my lines are much, much thicker. Okay, let's take it to the max. Let's go to 10. Yeah, so you can see that everything has got a little bit, uh, a little more cartoony, perhaps. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down to, say, one. Uh, currently, the other options I don't have available because these are available under the vectorial. But again, I'll show you that in a little bit. Sun shadows, I can turn on. Uh, and I can't set these things because, again, these are set by the other engine, I believe. And hotspots, we don't need to worry about. This is more of a legacy function. So we can ignore the uh, hotspots uh, for now. So I'm going to turn on. So now I can see my uh, shadows here. And this, these shadows are based on my 3D projection settings and the either the date and time or a custom angle uh, here. And all of this we can store inside of view. Okay, so this is basically the OpenGL side, but I do want to show you some additional features with the OpenGL, which are a little bit uh, hidden. So I'm just going to turn the monochrome off, con keep the contours. I'm just going to turn the sun shadows off. Okay, so that kind of brings us back to where we were. Okay, so within the OpenGL settings, Next to the OpenGL pop-up here, we have this little cogwheel uh, icon up in the top here. So if we click on that, there is some additional specific items just to OpenGL. These are more advanced settings. So generally we don't uh, need to deal with these too much, but there is a couple of things that are quite useful. For example, we can just turn on and off textures so globally. So if we just wanna see everything as just color and turn off the textures, we can do that from here. And there's two additional kind of um, ways that the scene is lit is by this highlight and this headlight uh, option. So if we turn these two on and click OK and click OK, you'll sort of see everything kind of turns dull. So I'm just going to draw a wall at the front here because uh, it might be a little bit more easier to see it on a curved surface. I'm just going to draw a wall and just uh, but, okay, so you can see that when I look directly onto a surface, it's brighter, and as the surface curves away, it becomes darker. And of course, and as I move the camera, then always the bit that's parallel or yeah, uh, perpendicular, I guess, to to the camera uh, is the brighter section, and then it kind of fades off a little bit. So this is kind of what this headlight. So it's a, if you have a headlight on top of your head that is kind of illuminating a little bit what you're looking at. So if I go into those settings again and go into the these uh, G OpenGL options and turn the headlight off and go OK and OK, you can see overall it sort of brightens up and it doesn't have that sort of gradient uh, anymore. So it doesn't have that appearance of you know, I have a headlight, you know, stuck, uh, struck to the camera head. I think by default this is off now. Uh, previous versions, I think it used to be on by default, but I find that the headlight tends to make things a little bit gray or washed out. So we generally turn that off. And the highlights, uh, I think, is, can also be off. So if I hit OK by turning the highlights. And I don't see a huge amount of difference, but I think it affects kind of the edges uh, a little bit. Okay, so I think the having the contours on helps quite a bit. So let's have a look at the internal engine and see why you would want to use the internal engine or, or not. So I'm gonna just change my layer combination to have kind of less polygons on the screen. Okay, so I'm gonna do is just uh, turning off the furniture. 
and just some of the detail. And if I then choose a 3D style uh, out of the box, so let's say the basic vectorial, and you'll see that it's actually much slower. And from the image of the icon, these ones with the little brick pattern means that it has the vectorial hatch on. So the internal engine uh, or the vectorial engine can show the vectorial hatch, but no texture and the OpenGL is the other way around. So it can show texture, but not the vectorial hatch. So again, I'll go into my 3D styles and just have a look at the slightly different settings. So I'm gonna create another uh, style just for the vectorial engine. Okay, I'm just gonna rename the other one. To click and GL, so I just know which is which, but you will know by the grouping here. So the, let's go through the vectorial engine. So it still has this monochrome model, and we also have the additional option of just showing wireframe. Oh, sorry, hidden line. So if I go hidden line, and it's going to be much, much slower to generate. And you'll notice that when I navigate, then everything sort of turns wireframe. Because it's drawing everything by vectors and lines, then it has to recalculate all those vectors based on the new camera position. So this is why it turns to wireframe during navigation to because it can't draw the stuff quick enough. Um, but when you stop navigating, then it will properly uh, draw it. Um, in a much smaller model, like even this model is not so complex, uh, it converts to this kind of wireframe during navigation. Mm -hmm. so here. Yeah. And because I chose the hidden line, you'll see that I can actually see my background through here. So it's a little bit similar to what the section elevation uh, settings have. So I'm going to sometimes, to the James, uh, when when the graphics card cannot handle the OpenGL, you will force us to go to this vectorial engine, right? Yep. Yeah, I think ArchiCAD 24 increased the OpenGL number a little bit, or maybe 23 did this. So I think that's like 3.2 or something, OpenGL. Um, mm -hmm. So if your graphics card doesn't support that, then you'll get a message when you start ArchiCAD up saying that OpenGL uh, won't work. And usually this is a graphics card issue. Um, maybe it's a driver that you would need to update, or the graphics card just doesn't support the newer, newer versions. But even yep. the version that we do support is still quite old, <laughs> meaning that uh, you know we don't su we support uh, still quite a way back, but you know it's newer than uh, kind of a, a newer version than what we did support. But it's still been yep. around for quite a while. So usually most computers for the last five, ten, five or so years or ten years probably will support it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you for the feedback. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go shaded. I'm going to turn off the monochrome model and I'm just going to make this uh, background a little bit lighter and click OK. Okay, so you can see that the look is quite different from the OpenGL, which had the sh shadows. And this is much more what you'll get in a section elevation or 3D document. Okay, and I see that I've got my shadows on. Okay, so now that I've, I'm in the vectorial engine, I have uh, some controls of some other things. For example, a silhouette. I can say I want the silhouette to be thicker, and you can see here in the preview that just the boundary basically around my entire model will be uh, fatter, will be thicker. The vectorial hatching, uh, I can also make fatter, but that doesn't really make sense. And I think currently I don't have, yeah, I don't have the vectorial hatch on this facade yet. And okay, so let's just go with the silhouette first and go OK. And you'll notice that pretty much anything kind of with an edge, uh, so like external edges of, of items, I'm, I'm not sure on the exact algorithm of this silhouette because I think as an architect, I'd probably expect just the outer contours to be highlighted, so anything that doesn't have anything behind it. 
but you can see here that also the windows uh, modified as well. But I think in some use cases, this uh, silhouette can be quite uh, useful just to give kind of a bit more depth. Uh, actually, if I increase this number, you can see here. So it's not just around the entire model, but also anything, I think anything with like a right angle uh, that goes away from you, then all fatten that lineup. But if the right angle is towards you, uh, then it won't increase that, uh, that line. So let's reduce this just to say two, just to give a slight more definition. Okay, so it's slightly heavier, so it gives a little bit uh, of a nice, I think, a, a nice balance. Okay, so I'm going to go to silhouette back to one. Mm -hmm. And with my shadows, I can go uh, contour on my shadow. And the preview really helps here. So now I can put a little contour around the shadow. I think in most cases you probably wouldn't. And now I'm going to have yeah, uh, edges around those shadows. So if I increase, say, the overall contours, say, to three, my silhouette to maybe two, and the contours of the shadows as well as one, then you can start getting some depth uh, to the overall kind of shape here. I still think it's a little bit heavy on the, uh, on the windows. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the contours for the shadows and the shadow intensity I can also uh, bring up and hit OK. And you can see my shadows are now like much, much darker. So let me just bring the line weight of the contours and maybe bring this intensity just down a little bit. Yeah, so you can get some interesting uh, effects. Like if this is a white model, then we can change the intensity of this uh, shadow. Okay, um, so let me just quickly show the Victorial hatch. So if I just select one of these walls, and I'm just going to change one of the materials just to something with a uh, Victorial hatch on it. Okay, so now I can see the, the, the brick pattern uh, of the hatch. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to the stuck of the whites. Okay, so one bene a couple of benefits from this uh, open, uh, from this Victorial engine. So if I get the marquee, and if I just draw a marquee around this and hit copy, so I'm actually copying the 2D elements here from this uh, 3D window. So I can say that I want to copy it as a scale drawing. Uh, I want to copy maybe, so my construction elements, I want to say none, the shadows, I want just the polygons, and the 3D hatching, I don't want any 3D hatching. So I just want to copy the shadows uh, from this view and then I can hit OK. So now if I could then create a worksheet, I'm just going to create a worksheet and then I hit paste, uh, center, zoom. Okay. Then here I can actually see all of those polygons that I've copied from the 3D window. Yeah. I, I also use this, uh, James, it's quite useful when we have, um, let's say, a terrain with a contour lines and we want mm -hmm. to show where the terrain is being cut. So if we make a 3D document and we bring in just the contour lines and the fill for where it's being cut, we can choose any height for this section to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know yep. if you can show that quickly. Uh, um, so, uh, and also probably it makes more sense if I'm using axonometric and looking down, is that what you mean? Or are you still yeah, thinking? Yeah, yeah, axonometric and uh, top down. Yeah. yeah. 
So the uh, RJ is saying for us to be mindful of vectorial hatchings in 3D views because older computers might crash. Yes. So if it's a vectorial hatch, like with a lot of lines, that might happen. It's. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say you do, you do uh, a section there. Mind. Yeah. Yeah, so we see that the rain is being cut there. Oh, it's not probably not there, a little bit further out. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then look from above. So my top view and camera at 270. Yeah. So a lot of people also like the floor plans with the shadows, so showing that where the openings are and all that. So this this also mm -hmm. works quite well. So now if I copy just the shadows, uh, maybe the edges of my construction elements, and hit OK. And I'll go into the same one, and I'll just delete everything here. Paste. Okay, so now I've got uh, the line work of my construction elements and then the fills of the shadows. Yeah. I think that's kind of what you meant. Yep, yep. And because they're all fills, I can also just do a select all, maybe change to foreground and turn them all to black. So then I can, and then I can do a unify uh, these polygons. So this can be a quite a good uh, way to kind of get the shadows. So I used to use this when, when I was an urban designer, for example, uh, especially if you're looking down on top of the roof, then you get the shadows of the entire building. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to switch back to my other OpenGL. So it's a bit quite faster. Uh, okay, so now that we've cut this, I can see everything is red. So let's see how we can kind of control this. So I'm just using the cutting plane uh, for now. So if I right click on the tab, uh, I can go to my filter and cut elements in 3D. And here I can say that the cut surface display is going to be using the element attributes or I choose a custom color. So if I set this yep. back to use element attributes and hit OK, then I'm going to see the cut of the building materials of the uh, structure. Or I can say everything is a certain uh, pen and uh, yeah, I can put a gray or a black. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a paint black, ivory black. Yeah. 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 So this can also be quite good for kind of presentation where you don't really want to care. You don't care about what you see uh, yeah. in the cut part. Okay. So now that we're working through this uh, dialogue, so I'm going to turn off my cutting planes for now and have a look at this dialogue again. So the filter and cut elements. So we have the cut surface, but we also have the show stories. So we can say we don't want to see the entire building, but we want to limit this range of what we see in 3D. This is, this is usually very good for if you use the iceberg method of modules and you want to cut out all of the modules or working stuff in the base, you know, that's multi-stories below. So here I can say I only want to see from minus one, for example, up to the first floor. And I'm going to trim the elements to the story range and hit OK. So now you can see that it's got a cut here, but anything residing on that roof level will also be hidden. So that's why these roof uh, elements have been turned off. But if I set that same setting to not trim, so if I, if I turn off this trim and hit OK, then I don't get these. So this element is on the uh, is on the floor that's not being cut and therefore it's showing an entire element. And now I can see that just the roof uh, element has been kind of hidden 
So you would normally do this with layers, but you could also do this with uh, this, this filter, the filter to arrange, depending on where your elements are kind of residing. Okay, so I'll go back into my filter. I'm gonna say infinite. And now I'm gonna have a look at this marquee uh, settings here. So if we go okay, and I'm gonna just turn on everything. So I'm gonna go to my 3D view and okay. okay. So now I see all my furniture inside. So if I go to the floor plan, and I'm just gonna get the marquee. And I'm, we, I think everyone knows about the single marquee and the fat marquee. I'm not sure if that's the official name, bold marquee maybe. Yeah, but but, but ex explain, I think it would be nice to. Yeah, so we have the, the, the thick marquee, which indicates it will go through all stories. But if we use the thin marquee, and if I hit F5, then I only show what's on that current story. But if I, so it's only what's on my graph floor. Actually, we're showing things, okay. Uh, but if I change to the fat marquee, then it will go through all the levels and show those details. And I usually, I think usually the fat marquee is better because then you could use the cutting planes to just trim off uh, the bits you don't want to see. Okay, so now that I've got this and I have my setting to say show everything with black that is cut. So maybe I'll change this back to kind of a, a brighter color. I'm just gonna change this to say red. So it's a bit more noticeable, okay. So the default is to always show what's inside the marquee. But if I switch this filter and cut elements in 3D, and if I say show elements outside marquee and hit okay, then it's gonna do the opposite. So it's gonna cut out, out anything that's inside. Let me just change my, so if I see the terrain. So it's gonna show everything outside of that marquee. So this can be a really interesting way to kind of cut a certain part of your model out so you can see inside it. Actually, it kind of looks like it's a, like a crater. <laughs> And normally we would draw a marquee with uh, just a um, uh, just a rectangle, but we can actually draw, say, with a polyline. So if I just draw with a polyline, kind of any shape, even if some of these edges are curved. So this is just a polyline, and let's say all of these edges are curved. Okay, might be a little bit funny there. But. And then the marquee, I'm just gonna remove the first one. And if I space bar on that, I can actually trace any shape of the marquee. So now in 3D, it follows that uh, polyline that I drew. Just turn on the terrain again. Yeah, so normally we're always used to just doing a rectangle, but any polygon, polyline that you do, you can uh, magic wand to trace that, uh, trace that shape. So I think you can get some really interesting uh, shapes uh, out of this. Okay, so let's go back to show all. Okay, so as we showed before about the cutting planes, so here we have the cutting plane. And I'm just going to clear, delete all. Okay. Um, so if I bring a cutting plane, usually these are um, sort of horizontal, horizontal cuts. Let me just try that again. Okay. Finalize. But normally these are horizontal cuts, but we can rotate any of these. So just like any other elements, sort of like in a, like a morph element, and we can actually do a angle uh, cutting plane. Usually it's easier if you get an elevation and you would see these lines and you can easily just rotate these, uh, these cutting planes to also look into your model. 
Um, and we can have as many cutting planes as we want, but they're, but they're always uh, infinite, uh, these cutting planes. Yeah, we can also show that there's a few tips and tricks on how to make, let's say, explore the axonometric views and all that with this kind of, uh, you know, combining different sets of views from here. So yep, you could yep, imagine yep. that we can have another cutting plane that will have the rest of the building, and then we can just combine and them so we represent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So these are some other ways that we can kind of look into our building. So what I showed earlier about we could have a, a 3D style that turns everything to wireframe, but if you want certain things to be wireframe, then what we can do is actually turn in our layer settings, we can turn on some of our layers just to wireframe. So this third icon across uh, will turn everything on that layer to wireframe or solid. So I've got a, a set of layer combination already where I've turned some of my layers to wireframe. Okay, so here it's kind of a hybrid. So instead of turning everything to wireframe through the 3D style, I can use the uh, layers to say, for example, all my external walls, my roof structure, all to wireframe. So it can be quite an interesting um, 3D kind of uh, image to just look inside your building with the outside um, kind of ghosted uh, like this. So I think that's kind of an interesting style to also come up with. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to my regular combination. Okay, so with the, uh, so I'm gonna create a new 3D style that kind of uh, takes this. So normally we're used to doing a white model, but I'm gonna try uh, creating a kind of an inverse uh, model. So I'm going to create a new style and I'm going to call this like a, a dark model, especially if you're using um, like on a Mac, we now have dark mode um, in ArchiCAD. So we could actually create a 3D style that was, matches this dark mode. So I'm going to go OK. And I'm going to choose monochrome model and I'm going to choose my surfaces to be maybe not black, but kind of a kind of a charcoal color. And my contours, I'm gonna to turn to white and okay. And my background, I'm gonna link those together. And instead of being white, I'm gonna say they're uh, black. And, but I'm still gonna show the contours and I'm gonna hit okay. So now I've got, I've got an inverse uh, model where pretty much everything is dark and we just have the line work as, uh, as, as white. So to, instead of just always a white model, uh, I think a dark model can also help uh, to kind of get an idea of the shape and maybe if you're working late <laughs> with, uh, with kind of the lights, with not many lights, this can actually help your eyes a little bit, I think, than just the white model. And I think this looks kind of quite, uh, quite cool. Yeah, okay, great. so once once we have all of these, we can easily just create a view. So if I go to my views and create a new view, then we have under the 3D only section, we have a 3D style. So all of these 3D styles can be saved and changed uh, per view. And we can also go to the filter and cut elements to change these settings as well. So where the crop area is, the marquee effect, and also the cut bodies. So all of these can be controlled per, per view directly in the view. Okay, so one, maybe one more thing. We could even do, let's say, with the same point of view, or the same, uh, same viewpoint, having, let's say, a black background and white lines like you're doing there, uh, or the, and, and one that is almost like the reverse. And then mm -hmm. you can even do like a, a GIF, like an animated image. So there are yeah. websites that do that. So you can, you know, make some interesting presentations for your project. Yeah. And different testings, like how does it look nicer? Does it look nicer like with everything dark or everything uh, light? 
I think yeah. this is quite good for the, for that purpose, like for testing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna switch to my other override. So another thing that people often come up with is that things in ArchiCAD or in the 3D view, they might look too, um, too gray or too dull. So I showed you the sort of headlights and highlights, these, these options, so turning those off can help. But if we also go to the uh, 3D projection settings and to sunlight, here is where we can choose the intensity of this sun. So currently the sunlight and also the color of the sun. So if I increase, bump this up from 55 to 100 and go OK, then you can immediately see that everything kind of got brighter uh, as a result. So this is also quite good just if you need to um, change this intensity. Now if I remove this down to 55 again, and you can see a change. Actually, it's good that I don't have to click OK on the second dialog to see the, the effect. And if I go to contribution to ambient, uh, ambient is up as well to 100. Yeah, you can see also. So the ambient is kind of like the shadowy areas can be brighter. Uh, I think we can only go up to 100. So it can't go like 500%. <laughs> And then I think the, yeah, so I, I kind of, to be honest, I don't really understand this contribution to ambience. So, uh, so that usually makes it duller. So I, I'm not so familiar with, the, with that option. Yeah, I don't play a lot with that either. Uh, I think that it's the contribution to ambient normally has to do with uh, the sunlight bouncing in the, in the different surfaces so how much uh, how much do you want it to bounce and bring um, more or less light to it mm -hmm. so you see the more you increase uh, yeah it's like the more a surface becomes like highlighted yeah. the zero i think is just like the sunlight hitting directly the element yeah i think it just means off rather than zero percent oh, okay maybe yeah. Um, yeah. So if I choose, say, the sunlight to be like a yellow, yeah, you can see that all my whites are now yellow. Which yeah. Makes sense. Right. Change back to white. And maybe okay. So, so James, we have a couple of questions here. Yep. Uh, one is from Zazar. Uh, she's asking if it's possible to insert the background JPEG to match with the building model for presentation or rendering purpose. Uh, uh, yep. The, yep. So if I go to my photo rendering settings and we go to background and I can choose an image here. I'm just gonna choose uh, maybe I have something in the... Yeah, the tough thing here would be to make sure we make the building match the exact angle the photo was taken from. Yeah, so the photo is just a still image that sits in the background and the model orientates around. So the image doesn't move with the model. So we don't have a like, yeah. a, a, um, like a 360 image. Yeah. Uh, so if I go to my 3D styles and then I say as in photo rendering and now I can see the image gets placed here. So now I see that image. Uh, I'm going to go scale to fill. Okay, so that also changes my 3D window. But you'll notice that as I move around, then the image in the background is not changing. Yeah. So this is how we can uh, get an image in the background. Any more questions? Uh, yes, we have another one. Uh, so we have Lester asking like about uh, when you go to perspective settings and the sunlight, are these settings specific to a view or is it like a global setting? Uh, these are per view. So when we change the camera, the sun, the sun position, we can save that in the view and create another view yeah. with totally different settings. Yeah. yeah. So Robbie said, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. 
I thought you already finished the answer. <laughs> yeah, go on. Sorry. Uh, okay. So, so Rob, Rob is asking, uh, creating a, a GIF from the 3D. Uh, yeah, probably I was not very clear. Basically, this uh, this is created by, in Archicad, you create the two, three, four, five images that you want for the GIF. And then you have to go to one of these GIF creators. So, uh, like there's even some websites that you can do that. You just drag and drop there the few images and it will create the GIF that then you can use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Photoshop has a built-in GIF maker. <laughs> Yeah. Well, nice. make it <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Nice. So, yeah, you can continue, James. No, it's okay. It's uh, These were the main uh, topics that I wanted to, to cover, just to give some sense of kind of what we can do with the 3D window, not just with the styles but how we can yeah. kind of copy stuff from the vectorial, how we can change through those other settings. Yeah. Well, I can see, well, uh, the value of this is that we can generate many different types of representation for the same model, even just by, uh, you know, you want to navigate it in an early stage where you don't want to commit with, with build, different building materials or different looks. So you just want to have a sense of, the the shape of the building like the materiality of the of the surfaces doesn't matter yet um, and we didn't even talk about this combined with graphic overrides because i think that's that it opens up even way more options to what you had here um mm -hmm. yeah so if you're used to you know different types of representation one is a more like kind of sketchy look or another one that is more sharp or more like technical drawing and uh, I really like the fact that you bring up that we can, you know, extract the, the sun shadows from a section or from a 3D or even in floor plan. So we can actually generate drawings that are very visually strong from, mm -hmm. from the model that if we had to do it manually, they would be quite hard to, to, accept, to, to generate. So, yeah, I don't think a lot of people uses this um, uh, 3D styles to to actually, you know, differentiate the way how they represent the project. And this could work very well for different project stages. Um, normally, I even like to model a building, uh, let's say even at early design stage with a little bit more detail. Because, you know, when we're placing a slab, we're placing a slab. When we're placing a wall, we're placing a wall. So if in early stage, I don't care about the materials, but I can have that there. We can just very quickly by changing the 3D styles, represent the model in a totally different way. Yeah. So yeah, um, any, any more questions, guys? Uh, Robbie says he got it. Yeah, not everything uh, can, can be inside here. We don't have an automated GIF creation tool. Yeah. But yeah, um, I also think that these, uh, an, one part that James didn't explore here, and I would like to suggest this also to, to the users, is that this kind of 3D styles, when you want to show the transparency behind or the 3D documents, are also very useful, not just at the uh, building level, but also at the object level. So if you want to explain how, let's say, a complex counter is going to be constructed to a carpenter or you have uh, you know a cabinet that you know you want to show inside of the of that uh, furniture element we can use this uh, see-through kind of, of setting just to explain okay we have this wrapping of geometry around but inside this is what you have so just like james is showing now yeah so this in terms of presentation i think can generate interesting uh, i'm just wondering james if we export yeah. like this to bmx would he uh, represent like this have these elements in wireframe and some elements in uh i i'm not quite sure i don't think i've tried with this wireframe yeah we, sh we should try it out to see now it made me curious about it <laughs> yeah yeah Okay, any more questions, guys?
if you want to on the camera, on the mic and talk, say something, uh, even something yeah. that, you know, we could have explored more and or we could, you know, showcase on the next sessions. Uh, we're glad to, glad to take that. Yeah, because we like could easily take this to to go into 3D documents and then see all the settings and in 3D documents in sections elevations. Yeah. So Lester and, is is asking here uh, opacity control instead of straight up uh, wireframe on layers. Well, basically we can have a material that is more or less transparent. So we just create a surface that is uh, let's say kind of a glass. And then we we can apply it with a graphic override to all the elements that are in let's say uh, exterior walls and and roof. So yeah. basically, in in that sense, we we could achieve that Lester. Yeah. yeah. So I can try doing that quickly. Yeah. All right. So. So we just say some element will become okay so i need to say all the walls that are in the so that are in a specific layer yeah so structure wall will turn the surfaces to glass clear glass yeah. and it's going to affect the cut and the uh, over uh, both surfaces yeah yeah so now all my walls are now glass yeah and if you want more or less transparency here it's just a matter of having uh you know different materials that would have different levels of transparency mm -hmm. yeah so, so okay res can you increase the re resolution of the 3d view when you place it on the layout yes uh, yes it's a little bit um it's a little bit funny because when you save a view unfortunately this size is disabled so it takes the current yeah. window size i believe this fix should be coming in an update now in this version because normally you can set the uh, image size right just uh, try to right click uh if you right click on the um tab right itself, there. Yeah. Yeah, you can go uh, as a window size. Uh, I think yeah. there's a there's a problem on Mac which it can't go beyond your screen size. Yeah, but still, instead you have 800 there, you can increase the resolution. I think it's not just on Mac that has that problem. It's normally is. A... Based on the resolution. If it's a JPEG, JPEG, then it will have a higher resolution. Sorry, okay, it's, it's a bit noisy. Uh... Okay. Uh... If I try undocking it, uh, I think the the height will be yeah so the height is fixed so the height can't be beyond the height of my window yeah, yeah that can, can be done but at least you're not uh, constrained by the the, the available screen yeah that sorry i'm just going to be angry <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so RJ is saying that normally you, if you save a camera view, then it will overshoot the image, then just save it as a JPEG. So if you mm -hmm. can save that image like externally, then you can just drag it and drop inside. It's a good suggestion, RJ. Yeah. Um, but uh, a fix should be coming, uh, I think, in the next update to be able to edit these numbers directly from the view settings. So it's not confirmed yet. So I still want to wait for that update, but it should be coming in the next update. Yeah. Okay. I think Wei Sheng is asking for something that I think it's only Mac uh, that has it. Uh, <laughs> when you go to a surface, so select the surface, uh, an element, go on a settings. Ah, uh, the search. Yeah, so the search on, on Mac, where you start typing. 
a surface. Yeah. Like a normal like surface. Glass. Yeah. This is a yeah. Mac only feature. Purely because it's yeah. built into the operating system. So. Yeah. Because you can do that on everything on Mac. Like inside a folder, you try to type, you type a letter and it will bring yeah, you there. Like if I go to help, then if I want to look up where resize is. Yeah. And I can just say, uh, okay, there it is. <laughs> yeah, resize you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For example. Yeah. That's a lot of Mac. Yeah, good stuff, James. Yeah, thank you. This opens up a little bit the topic on uh, representation, which I think is, is always on the back of the mind of everyone. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, we can do this uh, even even more often. Yeah. So, and uh, it brings up like graphic overrides and the uh, 3D documents and stuff, which we could do in another episode, maybe. Yeah, I think we can we can revisit this topic. I think that there's a lot more we can explore here. Uh, by the way, the next session I will do will be also like based on presentation. So I'll show how we can uh, now using the new connection for with Archicad and Twinmotion. So Twinmotion 2020 just got an update for 2020.2, and uh, it's now available also for Archicad 24 since today. It was yep. really convenient. Next week, I, I, I'll <laughs> showcase that to you guys and show how we can uh, take advantage of this. So I think that Archicad is great for um, these uh, representations from the model. There are more, um, I would say, more technical. For renderings, we also have the Cinema for the rendering engine, which I personally like a lot, the, the, the lighting calculation. but the the time that we take to prepare a scene or to prepare a whole model to to present it can be beaten uh, it, it can't beat the time that we do it on a on a twin motion level so plus on twin motion we can still do some animation some videos some still cameras that will show how the sun sun uh, will work from sunrise to sunset what happens how does the building look when it's raining uh, you know there's a lot of tests that we can do on by using twin motion that i would say they're very convenient and it looks like we're playing with it so it looks like we're having fun even more than in archicad so hopefully next week you i can entice you guys with all of that okay so, yeah. uh, can i wrap up the last few slides yes yes so if nobody has any more questions i think we can i can i ask the question yes yes sure I just want to ask, how do we export high res picture before, let's say, printing onto very big billboards? Okay, so one, one, so one solution. solution. Yeah, one solution could be what uh, RJ mentioned. You right click on the image, you set the image size. And even though you, the image size is bigger than the resolution of your screen, you cannot see the whole image. What you can do is you can save us and save as JPEG. So then you will be able to see that, to have a high res uh, image. So I imagine that the idea is to put it on an A1 sheet or A0 sheet and, and the image not go pixelized, right? So so that's that's a good way to do it. Yeah, I think that only really works on Windows. Like Mac has, a, has the restriction where the window size physically can't go beyond the screen size. Okay, yeah, but, yeah, but if you have a retina, but if you have a retina display, it's all right because you will yeah, have yeah, still five thousand pixels, right? So or, or it's still a four K uh, screen at least. Yeah. So yeah, if you have a a very bad screen on a Mac, you or a very old screen before retina, then it's more difficult. I think maximum is like two thousand or something like that. Yeah, maybe something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thanks, James. Okay, so, thanks. so we can follow us on social media, so like Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. So we're always posting like updates uh, on each of these. Um, even even some videos, some sessions that we might do with other uh, on other topics. So last week we've done a session with a, a Malaysia user group about 
using Rhino Grasshopper on, on a preliminary stage design. So yeah, if you have a script, of, yeah, it's already uploaded there. So if you want to have a look, it's that video concept design with Archicad. Um, yeah. And these are like real time things. So it's not just, you know, a gimmick that would show, show there, show up, done, it's done. And uh, yeah, so follow us on, on social media, have a look at what's coming up. If you can join yeah. here real time is good. If you missed it, you can always join later on. Yeah, so we'll repost uh, this in the next couple of days. Yeah. Uh, some upcoming trainings. Uh, the basic training currently is sold out. So it's uh, today and tomorrow, and I think uh, in another two weeks, but currently those sessions are sold out. So there'll be more coming in September. We just haven't got those dates up yet. Um, there's maybe three places remaining, I think, for the advanced modeling and the advanced documentation coming up next week. So if you go to graphisoft.com slash sg slash courses, then you can sign up. Uh, so these are free for SSA. Yep. And just a quick note about our upcoming digital event. So this is on in 16 days uh, on the 27th of August. but uh, everyone should have received an email and signed up. I think we have around 150 sign, uh, users signed up already. And I think next week we will probably explain this a little bit more, in a little bit more detail. And that's it. So thanks. Yeah, thanks for attending today's uh, session. It was good. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. And uh, catch up next week. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.